And uh, we'd love to. I, I know what I want to talk about. You, so, you have a topic? I, yeah. What? I wanna, all right. What's on deck here, Jeff? Silt fences. Silt fences. Silt fences. Yeah. I almost <clears throat> said a dirty word. So. <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What's up, guys? Thank you for visiting the Profit Dig Construction Show. I'm here this evening with Jeff Spencer, Jeff Givens. We got producer Jerry on deck, always holding this thing together. Just want to thank you. Good. And it makes us look good. That's right. Yeah. 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 Photoshop. Yeah. Photoshop. AI yeah. generated video. I know. Really I know. working. Yeah. Oh, man, when our when our swimsuit calendar comes out, it's going to be bad ass. Yeah. I, I need to lose to about it. 130 pounds. And you know this. Yeah. <clears throat> well, that's our big question tonight is, do you have to lose 130 pounds to be featured in the Profit Dig swimsuit calendar? But we'll get to that in a bit. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I'm totally kidding. But uh, no, seriously, check it out, ProfitDig.com. We have this cool ass bidding and job costing application that can enhance your bidding process. It can tell you at the line item level on your bid whether or not you're profitable. It's all about helping you grow. So check it out. Um, we just love to have you as part of the yeah, family. We, we just had so. a really good story from one of our users recently telling us that they spent six, ten hours on a on a bid manually before they finally just. Yeah. Said, hey, can I use Profit Dig for this? Because the person wanted a specific type of bid, and he said, you know what? Can I just use this other thing? The guy said, yeah, that's fine. And, uh, yeah. He said, within 15 minutes, he had a bid. Had a bid in you 15 know, so, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I mean. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. So check us out. Um, thanks for visiting the channel. Like our videos. Leave us some comments. Let us know. Follow the channel. That's very important. Let us know what you want to talk about. And, uh, We'd I, love to. I know what I want to talk about. You, so, you have a topic? I, yeah. What? I wanna, all right. What's on deck here, Jeff? Silt fences. Silt fences. Silt fences. Yeah. I almost <clears throat> said a dirty word. So. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Okay. And erosion control. And erosion. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. But you know, it's what's, it's it's a very you know important topic to 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 know about and to have in place. I mean, because it can come back to bite you in the ass if you don't. So what what is this? What is silt? Well, silt is like run run off of the job site. It's your more or less, you know, when when you're breaking ground, you're disturbing the earth. You know, grass, trees, plants, they hold all your soils together. The root mm. system it keeps it. You know, and of course, you know, you'll still have some major weather events that will disturb natural ground. But when you disturb it, then all that becomes loose. So if you have a lot of rain at one time, we call it siltation. The silt, the water will take it and it'll start to run off. Mm -hmm. And of course, natural erosion control is the best thing you can have. You know, like if you've got, say, 50 yards of good grass and trees or plants, then it's going to slow that silt down. It's going to mm -hmm. start to catch it, you know, before it gets to your silt fence. But the silt fence is put into place, which there's a couple of different types of silt fence. You've got just regular silt fence, which is an erosion matting that is stapled or stapled to a wooden post. Mm -hmm. You drive them in the ground, run your, your, your fabric, staple it up. You trench it in about six inches. It's got a, most silt fence has a line, you know, a berry line. Mm -hmm. So you take a trencher or backhoe and you dig a trench. You put this silt fence in there, then you backfill up against it. Mm -hmm. So no siltation can get under it. Gotcha. Yeah. So it, it, the, the idea is for the silt to hit that fence and pile up. Yeah. Not go through it. It lets the water go through. But it will not let the siltation material. Yeah. And then after one or two events, that fence gets full. So you know you've either got to get behind it and put in more fence, or you might have to pick that up and start over. You okay. know, and and you know, but you got to keep it up. And of course, you're going to have an erosion control company that's, that's monitoring this. They're going to come by and do you know weekly inspections, and then they will. If you have a major weather event, they will come in and inspect. You know, to, to see if there's any breaches and to see, you know, who may be at fault. And who, who hires these erosion control companies? It's up to the GC mm -hmm. or the contractor here who's doing the work, you know, mm -hmm. they've got to have it in place. Is it okay. just so they're 
up up to, up to spec on their erosion control so that they don't get fined or yeah that's what problems? the inspections are for and you know if, if if he comes in or she comes in and they do an inspection and they tell you hey this is faulty that's faulty and you know they don't make you you know they're not going to shut your job down they just notify you this needs to be corrected next day they come back they're going to write it up again next day they come back if you haven't fixed it they're going to write it up again well then the next day you have a major weather event or an act of god and and it, all this siltation has breached in one or two places what well, just so happens these places it breached are the ones they've been telling you about mm -hmm. and they haven't been fixed so at that point it's your responsibility and liability to clean this mess up and suffer any fines or consequences that may come along with it uh so i mean it can be especially if it gets into a, a stream uh, you know, EPA is involved. I mean, it can, uh, that was going to be my next question. Yeah. Does that involve EPA? EPA or TDEC? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, you're, uh, uh, you're 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 liable. So I mean, at that point, you know, you're going to be fined. Uh, but they can also dictate, like if it gets into the stream, you know, the, the, most time they're not going to let you get a piece of equipment in there. It's going to be right. wheelbarrows, shovels. Yeah. And so the labor is painful. Yeah. 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 And so, you know. It, a lot of times you're not talking about just one or two five gallon bucket fulls. I mean, you may be talking about, <laughs> you know, five or six dump truck loads. Right. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Just depending yeah. on how much silt actually in a long red yeah. range that weather event goes, you know, the more silt's going to wash. Yeah. And does it matter too, like what type of wildlife you might have living yes. in that stream? Yeah. I mean, you, know, you, you take like an endangered species. Like the crawdads. Like fish you know. or something. The gecko. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he goes way up. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, these crawdads here in Tennessee, you know, they have a mating season. I used to know what it was, but I think it's March 15th through May 15th or something like that. You had that one on your calendar? No, I used to. <laughs> you always. Yeah. yeah. Crawdaddy mating time. Yeah. Yeah. Crawdaddy mating time, yeah. yeah. Where you going with that net? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of things can be affected. And, you know, if it's a, a, a decent-sized stream and you have a lot of rain, a lot of silt, it may carry two or three properties now. I mean, you may have to, you know, disturb somebody else's property to get on there to clean it up. So, I mean, it can, it can get costly. It's critical yeah. to stay on top. Of it, it is. Yeah. You know, it's not, and, you know, we talked about a couple of different types of silt fence. Another one is, uh, like TDOT, they require this all the time, but a lot of job sites require it, but it's called silt fence with wire backing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's literally like just fencing it's wire. A, yeah. And what that does, that keeps, like a lot of times, if you go on a job site and you see some silt fence, <clears throat> excuse me, without wire backing, it's got some silt up against it, and when it folds starts over, it mm -hmm. starts drooping. Yeah. Well, this wire backing is zip tied to it. Okay. And so the wire, it's got steel fence posts, and so they're more rigid. Yeah. And so it will take and hold more pressure. Yeah. Which, in return, should keep you safer. Yeah. Which I assume then once you've gone out and. and observe the job site that determines what type of silt yeah. fence you're going to yeah. install or have and if, if, and if you're somewhere you know engineers are pretty good at this now about designing stuff <clears throat> for erosion control you say you're on a pretty good hill here and you're going down to maybe a stream they will actually have multiple runs of silt fence oh, to okay. where if it breaches this one the second one should catch if it breaches it you got a third one in place I got you. yeah redundancy yeah. yes yeah, mm -hmm. so it's uh, and you know, there's a lot of other measures. You know, you got you know rock check dams, you got straw waddles, straw stake straw bales, uh, you know, erosion eels. There's just a lot of different things. You know, that they may require or or want in place. You know, to help protect the environment or neighbors down the road. You know, it's uh, yeah. And 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 what? So when you're planning your jobs, what what kind of event are you trying to predict is going to happen like what are you accounting for like uh well, like a certain size any, any, flood or any time of day days what, any what time that they at? design a project that's going to have runoff on it they base everything you know as far as their detention ponds whatever drainage system they have in place in this project is based on a hundred year flood okay so if you ever have a major flood like that, to an extent, this project is designed to handle that amount of water in a short amount of time. Does it always work? No. 
but in theoretic terms, it should work. Mm -hmm. But you can't ever predict Mother Nature. Right. You know, Mother Nature, you may think you, you know, yeah. you go back to May of 2010, May yeah. 1st, 2010. When Nashville was underwater? Yeah. Yeah. And I think <laughs> they said that was like a 500 year flood, I believe. What they yeah. Were. Yeah. I feel like we've had a few 500 year <laughs> floods in the past couple yeah, of decades. Yeah. Like, and, you know, you, know, you just. We get a July. No matter how well flood. things are designed, I mean, you think you got everything in place to handle, you know, a lot of water at one time. Mother Nature can show you right quick. You're not. You're not ready. Mm -hmm. No, you're not. And in construction, you're sort of in business with Mother Nature. Right. In a sense. So it's yeah. It's very philosophical. Respect it. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And I guess if I'm a contractor, especially getting started, I'm probably going to sub out mm -hmm. the erosion portion of yep. my job. You always you feel confident. Else. Yeah. Take care of that for me. So. Yeah, we generally sub ours out, and yeah. like I said, you know we. Whoever you sub it, what works good is when you sub it out, they have people on staff that does inspections. And ah, so you pay them, yeah. so you, you put a mailbox up or you know, outside at the entrance to your job site. Every, every week they got their reports in there. Okay. So if you do have a major weather event, if t -Dex shows up, they can open up that box and look. And see that. He's got everything noted. You know, hey, hey yeah. he's been in compliance this whole job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so this this is something that, that he couldn't stop. You know, it was yeah. out of his hands. Yeah. So it's it's very important. You know, you, you can put it up yourself. And, you know, T-Deck now requires you, if you're going to install self-fence, you've got to go to class and you've got to be certified to inspect your sites. You've got to be certified to put up the erosion control. And so they pretty much put a stop to, you know, just like, hey, I'm going to go out here and put up my own silk fence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, throw yeah. It up, yeah. We'll give it a good old boy try. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. We keep my shit over here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like got some garbage bags going over here. Yeah. Like, the, you know, the, the yard bags, of yeah, course. We yeah, we go ahead. I've run out of fencing. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm kidding. Well, Jeff Spencer, good stuff as always. Yes, sir. Appreciate your insight. Jeff Gibbons. Thank you all. You're welcome. Producer Jay. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of awkward. <laughs> All right. Producer Jerry, thank you as always. Thank you, Producer Jerry. Yeah, Check you. us out at profitdude.com. We have the industry leading bidding and job costing application. Actually, we don't based on users, but we're growing and it's extremely affordable and it can really enhance your bid process and show you at the line item level on your bids where you are making or losing money. So I highly. And Profit Dig, as long as you have internet access, you can take us anywhere you want to in the world. Absolutely, yeah. It's a cloud-based application. So you yeah. just need internet to access. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well guys, thanks for stopping by today. Subscribe to the channel, like our content, leave some comments, let us know what you want to talk about, and we'll see you soon. Later.